what we've dealt with in the past few months is hearing a lot of people talk about the Ali Act and trying to transition it into MMA. And between him and I, him obviously being a fighter, me obviously being a fan, we have some different stances on it. And what we wanted to do was kind of create something that at this point didn't exist in a website that would be a resource for everyone to see what our side of it is and, and make this unex, you know, exceptionally crystal clear. We, we don't oppose change, him nor I. You know, we think that there needs to be a reform in MMA, and we think there needs to be change to the sport for, for a variety of reasons, fighter safety, fighter pay, transparency. But we also want to make sure that it's independently reviewed and that the things and changes that happen are done in looking at modern-day MMA. We feel like it's very short-sighted to take a law that's 17 years old and simply change the verbiage on it and, in, a, in effect, globally impact MMA as a whole. So, obviously, with me and you, this being something that I'm doing for an enjoyment, us going out to Buffalo, you know, for a day or two, it's something that I'm going to enjoy. It's a vacation day for me. Going out to Anthony in Kansas City is a great opportunity, and I respect our friendship and, and him allowing me to go out there with him. But this is his pay. This is his salary. This is his job. There's two drastically different sides of it. And I think a lot of times his side of it isn't being told completely by some of the athletes that are electing to step up and talk about it. And together we want to create a platform where people can know some more facts about this, get some information, and create their own opinion. And if you don't agree with ours, that's fantastic. We would still love to talk to you and hear your side of it. I would welcome anybody to sit down with me and tell me how this is going to completely benefit mixed martial arts. Because from what I'm seeing, while there are some good things to it, there's also a lot of things that inconsequentially would damage MMA. So we want to have that open dialogue, and we want to create that site. And really, that, that's what created MMAVote.com. You know, we would love everybody today, if you've got a couple minutes, a very simple website. You know, there's not much to it. It's a lot of text. It's a lot of reading. It's a lot of resource. But it's going to give you an opportunity to get a little bit more insight as to exactly what they're proposing. No, I think uh, we've had this conversation a lot on this show. And, Anthony, I'm going to throw back to you. But we've had a, uh, this conversation about not only the, uh, the Ali Act, but taking um, very seriously, that, as you mentioned, Moody, that this is the, the fighter's pay. This is their job. And if it's not their job, they're working three other jobs to pay for this job. You know what I mean? Because it's a passion. And as you said, I'm not getting into an octagon ever in my life, Moody. Uh, and, and probably neither are you, but, you know, Anthony does, and we need to respect and we need to um, get more um, media on the, the, the plight of the fighter. And I thought it was very interesting. Um, I think it was last week on the MMA Roadshow, John Morgan had stated, came out and said that he's going to try and talk about, you know, the fighter issues a bit more, keep them in the news. And I've been saying this for years that, this is how we're going to come about change. The guys at the top, because I'm not a journalist. Moody, you're not a journalist, right? We're just two guys, like you said. We're trying to do this. Even though we've logged a lot of hours and, and we're doing this radio show, or it's on the Internet, um, we're, not, we're not John Morgan. We're not Errol Hawani. And I think that those guys really need to get their um, – I don't want to be crude here, but they need to get their heads out of the UFC ass and 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 get in, involved with with the fighters and and let's throw throw it to you um anthony because i'm getting a little bit hot under the collar i'm getting on my soapbox here so let's throw it to you and, and let's push this website because um as i i was on it earlier today and yes as moody as you said right now it's you know kind of bare bones just giving us the facts of what is happening but i think it's important i think the, the, for the for people to know and to be educated anthony is very very important it is it is really important, and I know that uh, at all times, education isn't always the most entertaining thing in the world. Um, but it, it, if it's if it's important, then it needs to be done. Um, obviously, my stance on this is gonna is, is very biased, as it, it immediately affects me in my life. Um, so when when the Ali Act was was brought up uh, to you know to involve MMA or, or include MMA. It was something I looked at really closely. Um, and as I began to dig into it more and more and more and, and kind of enlist the help of, of, of my good friend Ryan, because these are things that, that he's good at. You know, he's good at, he's good at researching. He's good at understanding things. 
and looking at it from an unbiased position. Um, because obviously everything that I read, I read it as it, as it directly affects me. So I wanted, I wanted someone else's opinion um, on, what, on what he thought about it. And although we did have some varying opinions on some of the things, Overall, we we agree that I I don't absolutely think that this is the answer, and I, and again I want to be very clear that I'm I'm not against change. I do think that the current landscape in MMA I don't want to use the word flawed as Rain Couture used it. I, I would say that it could it could be better, and uh, but I don't think it is as bad as as people are or, or some people are making it seem. So as I look at it. You know, and, and I talk to my other friends, you know, I, I'm in a unique position that I, I'll come out and say what I feel and I don't really give a shit what people think about it, you know. And I'm in a unique position where I talk to other UFC fighters and other Bellator fighters and, and I'm in close contact with a lot of these people. We're friends. Those are my peers. And uh, as a whole, the, there's some things that we want, you know, to be changed in MMA. And the more that Ryan and I dig into it and the more that we look at it, I don't think that the Ali Act is the answer. I do think that some of those things um, could mm-hmm. be affected that, for the good. You know, there is some good things in the Ali Act. I don't want to say that it's a bad a bad thing, but I do think that there's some things within the Ali Act that will hinder the progression of the other things that we want. Um, I, and, right. and I'm not sure that I'm willing. I'm not sure that I'm willing to, to trade those. Um, I think that boxing and MMA are two completely different sports. And I think that MMA is big enough and is important enough to enough people that I think that we, if, if something needs to be brought to legislation and people really believe that there needs to be a law passed to, to protect fighters, even though I do believe that most of those things are already protected, that we, we deserve our own law. We deserve our own legislation, and I don't think that we should just be rolled in with boxing. I agree with you 100%, Anthony. I've been saying this. We've been on the air, the airwaves for almost a year now, and that's exactly what I've been saying. Putting uh, the Ali Act and applying it to MMA as it is constituted right now is like using the 10-9 must system and applying it to MMA. We've seen the mistakes and, and where that system falls down in MMA, and I believe that the Ali Act would do exactly the same thing and, as you said, would take things away from the fighters that you really want. And I'm going to throw back to you, Moody, because, again, this is one of the top issues in my mind, and, and I'm – We want to hear your voice, not mine, because they've heard me speak about this many, many times, and we're trying to promote uh, MMAVote.com. I mean, let's be honest. Let's look at the the history of this. You know, a lot of people just are way, in my opinion, way too quick to say that this is a 1999 act or 1998 act. The original propositions of the federal government becoming involved in boxing is, is something that started in the 60s. And if you can look at today's modern landscape of media, discussions, conversations, we're so far beyond that time. And really, when you look at the 1996 Act, the Professional Boxer Safety Act, it put the government in a a unique situation where they now did a very good thing in creating a act to help avoid unnecessary in-ring injuries, but in turn, they also endeared themselves federally into boxing. And they then had to look at a situation where if we're going to control what's in the ring, do we also not need to have some type of control over what happens outside the ring? And quite frankly, some of the things that were happening in boxing needed to be reformed and needed to be corrected. There's no one that's going to debate that. But what I will debate is these aren't things that are happening currently in the UFC. Yes, pay is a problem. Yes, there needs to be some transparency and equality. But I don't think anyone's going to sit there and cite that this is slave labor. You know, when I go back and I look at Tim Witherspoon, this is a guy that got promised five hundred thousand dollars for a bout, but only ended up taking home ninety thousand. So, you know, I don't want to speak for Anthony, but I feel pretty firm that if anyone in MMA today found a signed a bout agreement and got a less than a quarter of what they were supposed to make that would become front page news exceptionally quickly and people would become aware of the situations. These these things that we're talking about in this law, while some of them, yes, would be helpful to MMA, some of them aren't exactly modern day MMA problems. And for that matter, some of them have already been addressed. You know, one of the safety aspects of the Ali Act was they wanted the states 
to have athletic commissions regulate the judges and regulate the referees. This is something that MMA has done without any federal or you know aid, without ever without anyone telling them they had to do it. So you kind of have that mindset of something that's a little bit dated, and it's just like I hate to use the same terminology, but it seems a little short sighted. It seems like almost like a quick fix to just have the impression of well. If it is good enough for boxing, it is good enough for MMA. The problem is, if it was good enough for boxing then, that doesn't mean it is good enough for MMA right now. No one's using the term good enough. I, Like I said, and I think Anthony made it very clear as well, I don't want to disrespect boxing. I don't want to disrespect MMA. I want to make sure that they're looked at as uniquely as they are. And if there are things that need to be reformed now, we decide that independently and create its own law. It should not be bundled in something that's 17 years old that was originally designed to impact another sport. Yeah, you guys are speaking all the knowledge here, and I, I agree with you 100%. Um, there is no UFC without the fighters. The UFC can promote the UFC in a cage unless there's actual people in there doing, you know, doing the sport, participating in martial arts. We don't have a UFC. We don't have MMA. So let's throw back to you, Anthony, real quick, your thoughts on what I'm saying here. I mean, you guys are the show, and you guys deserve, like other mainstream sports, to get, um, um, uh, um, whether you're a high-end professional, like if you're LeBron James, or you're, uh, to, to take a basketball term, um, or if you're the guy that rides the bench and is like the third-string guy, you deserve to get a pay scale. And, and that's what we really need to be focusing on, in my opinion. No, I, I, I absolutely agree. Um, and, and to kind of go back to my, my same point, the, the issues that most MMA fighters, and I don't want to say all because I can't speak for everybody, but everyone that I've talked to, which is a lot of people, um, the things that we want in, in our careers and, and, and for the, you know, and me specifically, obviously, with the UFC, what I want from the UFC and, and what my friends in Bellator want from Bellator are, are not things that the Ali Act is going to fix. Um, it's going to, the Ali Act, in my opinion, will create a whole slew of different problems and not fix the ones that we really want fixed. Um, obviously, fighter pay is, is a huge one. Um, do I want to make more money? Absolutely. I mean, I can't, you won't find one person, whether they work at McDonald's or fight in the UFC, that wants to make more money. But at the same, at the same time, the UFC is running a business. I want to make as much money as I can for each fight and the USC wants to pay me the least amount as they can. That's how business works. That's how McDonald's works. That's how every other business works. Um, I, I, I would, you know, like every issue that, that, I, that gets brought up all the time, is health insurance, pensions, um, guaranteed pay, guaranteed contracts, um, you know, things along those lines, all those things are reserved for people that, that are, are considered employees. The Ali Act will absolutely stop that. Um, there, via the Ali Act, you can't have a contract that's longer than a year or 12 months, and, and there's everyone's an independent contractor. So there's no way that we will get any of those things. So it, as it will, you know, it, as it may add some positive short-term value to some guys, the the vast majority of, of us fighters are, are, aren't going to benefit from the Ali Act at all. Will, will it help your Conor McGregor's? Absolutely. Um, but is, is it going to help Anthony Smith? Not at all. It's not going to do anything for me except hinder my ability to someday maybe be able to collectively bargain or 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 whatever that may look like. So, you know, I I I think that Ryan and I, and along with you know the ABC, um, everyone everyone's goal is to is is is, is the, the the wellness of the fighters, you know, and. and fighter protection and, and and I just don't I don't think that this is gonna fix everything and, and I don't know what the I don't know what the answer is and that's that's kind of what me and Ryan are coming here for. We in, in doing this we don't have the answer. But we we do mm-hmm. believe that the Ali Act is not is not the answer. And we we want our we want we want a we want a fair look at it. We want we want our own legislation if that's what needs to happen. We want our we, we don't want to just take some you know, a, a 17 year old law and just change the verbiage and in, to include MMA and, and, and actually they're changing it to combative sports. So it's not just MMA that's going to be affected. That's, 
kickboxing, that's Kwondo, that's jujitsu, that's that's everything. And just ball it all into one. I you can't find one person that says that you can can you really put boxing, MMA, taekwondo, jujitsu and kickboxing all in the same in the same group and then just oversee us all as if we're just one entity. I don't I don't think that that's fair. And I think that MMA in general has reached a point in the world that if you're going to change something, you need to look at it completely by itself and specifically change whatever you need to change in just MMA and not just look at it as a as a broad spectrum of just, all right, boxing and MMA, let's change this. It works across the board. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. And um, my last point is, you know, it, it, as far as this part of it is, the, the things that were happening in boxing um, that – required this this to you know this the Ali act to be enacted generally aren't things that are, we're having problems with in MMA um if you really dig deep into the you know, as Ryan and I have dug really deep into the the history of boxing and the reasons that this law was enacted it, it boxing was a really really corrupt sport and I don't think that anyone can argue with that and and I you know I think that the Ali act was a good idea and I I just think that it was effective and I, I I think it's just two completely different landscapes. So I don't think one mirrors the other at all, and I, and I think that 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 needs to be looked at. Well, I think that all major or profession major professional sports at one time were very very corrupt. Look at the early days of football. I mean, these guys are getting concussions. Not even 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 into the 80s, getting concussions, and the the league was lying to them about uh, you know what head trauma was all about. But again. I digress. We have kept Anthony away from his family, Moody, for an hour and 20 minutes now. And, of course, he's going to be flying out later on today to go train. So I'm going to throw it to you, Moody, to uh, for the last comment, and then we're going to get you guys out of here because we are well into overtime. I think a lot of things that Anthony just said there are important to, to note from his side because I think we all understand just as an adult, if you're going to have a law, you have to set a punishment for things to truly change. In federal laws are very difficult because not a lot of us are familiar with federal laws. We don't break federal laws on a daily basis. But that's a big issue with the Ali Act. It does it, it gives the infractions, but it doesn't set a guideline for a defined punishment. It leaves that up to the state. And because of that, we went 17 years with this federal law where no boxer, no promoter, no boxing commission employee has ever been charged with an infraction. So the mindset of that is you expect me to believe the day this came into law was the day everything got corrected in boxing. And that's not true. We we know that's not true because we have former presidents of the Association of Boxing Commissions coming out and saying that he went to U.S. attorneys and he tried to draw charges against illegal boxing. He tried to bring charges against fighters that should not have been fighting because other states weren't honoring medical clearances. Those things are not debatable. Those are factual things. So to take this and to apply verbiage, as Anthony said, to it and expect it to change everything, knowing that it hasn't really changed boxing, to me, is a problem. And I would honestly say, going back and looking at what happened, not just this act, but also the Professional Boxers Act, you know, those are things that boxing actually needed, actually needed to stay alive today because they were at that point of corruption. MMA is not there. MMA has not been there, to my understanding, at that level. There just wasn't, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe in in 20 years somebody will come out with a book and prove me wrong. But from what I've seen from the people I've talked to, it's not where it is. And we don't need to act like it is, and we don't need to treat it like it was. We need to independently look at something. And, again, we're not coming out with an answer. That's very important to be made clear. We're not coming out and saying, hey, we don't want this. We have a better way, because we don't know what the better way is. The the better way involves, though, everyone sitting down and discussing what the current problems are for a fighter in his career in trying to mediate something that resolves them. And not everyone's problem is going to be fixed, but at least we'll know that we'll be in a better place after that happens. This is people's livelihoods. This is Anthony supporting his family. It's not something that people need to take as lightly as they are. And in my opinion, it's not something that needs to be brushed under or coated with someone saying, well, if it's good enough for boxing, it's okay now, and this is going to help them get paid more, so I want it. There's so many more ramifications that would happen that could negatively impact the sport that we need to be careful of what we're doing.